Alright, today we're gonna talk about state leading cloud rest. And it's kind of a longer topic I feel like than it will be VAS because VAS is a much simpler trial in terms of amount of mechanics and stuff. So we're gonna just like we did with VAS review um different POVs of different roles and talk about how they interact with one another and then a little bit about rate composition and how to call alts. So let's start with the tanks. This is a main tank POV uh, over here. And we're going to talk about raid leading hard mode. If you want to raid lead non hard mode, you just add one side boss and there's a bunch of guys on how to do side bosses. There's like a burden boss and all the same mechanics as they would do in this um, fight, but separately. Okay, so Main tanks in VCR basically start with tanking the monstrosities. Either they decide which tank to switch, or one tank can take both. Monstrosities have this uh, unique mechanic, Baneful Barb, that's happening right now. And main tank needs to, well, any tank basically who holds the monstrosity needs to roll it. If they don't roll it, then they will get a healing debuff. So they will they will get a hit and healing debuff, and it's going to be harder to heal them back to full. And while they have this healing debuff, like it's gonna persist up until you heal them up, so there is no limit to it. It's gonna stay on them for a long time. Uh, next, they pull Zumaja, point her away from the group. She will do various mechanics. For example, this one is interruptible. She will do like, like a swing with her hands like that. And as she do that, people get trapped. You can see somebody get trapped over there. That's actually me. <laughs> and so when people get trapped, they can get hit by other mechanics and die while being trapped. Or they can just die due to, um, due to fall damage. And that's not good. So basically, you want to interrupt that. But usually, if it happens at the beginning when no other mechanics apply, then people don't trapped it and they let her cast. And that is because if she starts casting various mechanics, she will not port. So in here... Um, and they let her cast up until she spawned kite. Now that she spawned kite, they will be able to hold her in the center for longer time and get better burst on her. So kite mechanic is basically this ground away appears on the ground and follows two people. The tank who holds her, who has a tent on her, and the furthest piece person from her. So that's usually a kite healer. And it's kind of, it moves rather slowly so you can just run around like circles around it while performing your job. Next mechanic that she does in the center, you can see she's casting Nocturnal Favor. Nocturnal Favor cannot be rolled, it needs to be blocked, or it can be also reflected. So this is a Warden tank and they have a um, they have like a Reflect Shield for it, so they can just cast it. Uh, this is the uh, Ice Lap or whatever it's called. So if they cast it, then it's not going to hit them at all. But if it's any other tank, for example, Decay or Necro, you need to block Nocturnal Favor and then right after, heal yourself to full. In this particular video, they're performing mini tank and main tank job because it's like a uh, one portal CR. But usually you would have mini tank who holds your area separately. And what mini tank does is basically they dance your area. She will jump. Usually minis jump from the pedestals up the top, not usually all the time. So they are on the, their pedestals up top here, and you can see which mini is on which pedestal, they are always there. And they will jump from that pedestal down to the arena in that particular area, so you can expect where they will be appearing, because they always appear in the same spot. You can also hear them, so when Sororia spawns, she will say a certain line, and you can hear where the sound is coming from if you have a stereo, head, stereo headset. So that's how I usually know where Sororia will be appearing from, because I listen to it. But then you can also just know it's from north, south, whatever, and then tank her as soon as she appears and stack her. To stack her, mini tank would come up to this flappy foot over here. She will come over and then turn her around like this. So she stacked in Zumaja flappy foot, like in her thigh over here would be a very good to stack Siroya. Then eventually Siroya will do breaths, so don't point her at the group, obviously. She will also... Uh, put a standard after 50% of her health, she starts doing standards. Oh no, not after 50, sorry, like she will does uh, 
uh, she does the running flares after no she starts jumping i'm sorry i'm lying to you so much she starts jumping after 50 percent, but flares and everything appears throughout the fight so let's go back and see how he reacted to the uh, standard uh, so when standard appears so she was stacked on the flappy foot before right yeah to here so she's cast standard when she's in standard she does more damage just like any other dragon knight she does more damage with the rest of the skills so you want to put her on the other side of the zumaja in here he doesn't have too much like wiggle room because he's also main tanking but off uh, if you have separate mini tank he can just roll through zumaja so basically rolls from this flappy foot over to another side and just stack her on the other flappy foot uh, in a similar fashion on the on the other side but other than that the the picture will be pretty much very similar the Siroya will be first here then she will move over and be here and so people all need to take us first sets of dots this side and second set of dots this side of Zamaja so that they know they perfectly expect where Siroya goes um, during the transitions, this is another important mechanic that tanks need to be prepared for, is the Maja ports away. So you can see over here, the Maja will port away and appear on some other side of the arena. And it's like not defined where. She can appear right next to where she was or completely on the opposite side. So the tank needs a little bit mobility to make it to that new position, to see it and make it to the new position on time so that they taunt her and put her away from the group. Uh, Zamaja retains all the debuffs as she ports. So like if she was had Voln, she will retain Voln. If she was staggered, she will retain stagger and she will retain taunt. That's why you saw them going a little bit, taking a curve, because if they were not to make it on time to that side, she would turn around and start laser beam at them, but they're not in the center of the arena, so she will not laser beam the team. So if she, uh, let's find the laser beam mechanic. So that's kind of clusterfuck over here because they're already tanking multiple minis. Um, so in here she should start, you see this mechanic? She laser beams from her head towards them. So let's move back a little bit again and look at it again. So she's gonna do some random mechanics and start laser beaming. Um, nocturnal, next should be laser beam. So appearing from her head again, she appearing from her head at them. So it's kind of cone like this. So if anybody were to stand here, they would also get laser beam. It's called cognitive camber. And the more of the people get hit by cognitive camber, the harder they get hit. It's kind of ramping up with the amount of people she can hit. So if you turn her at the group like this and she cognitive cambers whole team, somebody will die for sure. So that's very important for you to make to another side of the arena and point her away from the group so that people don't get cognitive cumbered. Another thing that tanks do is go to the portal. Oh, also Vortex is here. Vortex, you want to pick up the tank? Right. Let's jump over to the Vortex's uh, preview because he's actually tank main, so we can watch his stream. And that's so much better than what, what I will tell you. Portal. So before portal spawns, make sure that, um, you know, you make sure your other tank who who's ready to receive the maja is like you know they'll say uh grabbing boss in three two one they'll take it off you and when you hear that countdown you know i should not retaunt just in case you grab it again and over taunt it so um yeah you'll you'll see it uh yeah you'll see it happen in any second right right now like uh yeah, the the guy who just came out of the portal just got done tanking the monstrosity, so he's gonna be taking it right here. Who's that? That's uh, uh, Owen. He he just took it off me. So not my problem anymore. Okay, so my problem now is to make sure I'm ready for the portal. So highly recommended that if you are going uh like portal's about to spawn, heavy attack, get some resources back. Be at full resources because you're gonna need them downstairs. They're gonna use all your mag, uh, not all your stam, but uh, yeah, just be prepared to. Uh, you know rumble in the jungle down there so portal will spawn in like five seconds so i'm just vibing just recovering resources i'm sitting about full so highly recommend that uh ration your potion because you'll, you'll notice that it's going to come in clutch if you use it um when you desperately need it aka it'll get your mag back get you some health back maybe some stam if you needed it so 
uh, I guess uh, going back here, uh, if you know what the voltaic mechanic is, I just got a bar swap here, meaning I won't be able to use my back bar uh, going down there, which is a big deal for the next nine seconds. I won't be able to debuff the crystals that are downstairs. So um, make it a habit when you're going to go downstairs. You want to be pointing, what is it, north? Uh, north, right yes. Sure, yeah, sure, so sure. Zamaja always spawns north. So if you do the trial enough times, uh, you'll know, like, even though this is a box of a room, you'll know where north is. But basically, Zamaja's always north. And you'll see, right as I go in the portal, you're going to see I'm staring right at her. See? She's right there. So uh, you can immediately taunt her. And at this moment, you say, portal, uh, I am two in this case, portal two safe. And you say portal to safe, your DPS know to go downstairs. So in this moment, I have Voltaic, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna just focus on blocking. This is the biggest problem that tanks have from what I noticed downstairs. They're gonna take an unblocked light attack, the mind blast, the uh thing C was talking about. Except downstairs, Zamaja's mind blast or cognitive comber uh, is not an AoE. So you can point it at anywhere. As long as it, it'll only hit you. So uh so right now I'm taking the nocturnal. You're gonna hit the get the nocturnal hit here, and I'm using wings to mitigate some of the damage. Uh, you know, back in the day, but you can just like at this moment, uh, if like you were like if you're a DK tank, pop Igneous. It'll shield you from some of the damage. If you're a warden, uh, make sure you're just healing yourself. Uh, you know, if you're a necro, make sure you're slicing the boss. Whatever, make sure you're nice and healthy to receive this this uh mine this uh this nocturnal here and yeah i'm getting low here but as a dk you want to get low because i'm about to pop green for like 20k so let's uh, see 16 so and uh i am using earth gore uh but whatever uh, i just walked out of it so just pretend it never happened <laughs> so um you know my bar swap is gone finally so meaning uh right now while she's porting i know i won't die here i know my health is getting low so i'm ellie draining i'm ellie draining i know she's not gonna mind blast me she's porting right now i'm just ellie draining the orbs so yeah the DPS have an easier time breaking the crystals. Normally, I would have done that immediately as I went downstairs, but uh, obviously I had bar swap. So um, yeah, so just make sure block every single hit. You'll notice your durability, your sur just your survivability will go up like massively. And use everything in your power to mitigate damage or heal yourself. You know, use your portal wind, use your igneous shield, keep blocking as much damage as a DK, and then you get low. Boom, green dragon blood. You can see I'm like sitting at low health right now, but I'm like, okay. Because I know in the back of my head that you see that potion? I haven't drank it once because it's my SOS button. I will use it as soon as I'm low on mag, as soon as I'm low health, whatever. Like, it's so nice. So just keep, uh, like, you could Ellie drain some more crystals here, but for me, I'm just making sure I live. Uh, so, you know, I'm just living, just, you know doing the occasional thing. I could pop a potion here if I want, which I still don't. Uh, they, oh, no, that wasn't a potion. I think somebody healed me. But yeah, <laughs> it's like, yeah. Um, you can see I'm just I'm just kind of, like, I haven't took a single unblocked Mind Blast. It's huge, because if you take the added dot damage plus the Mind Blast, yikes. You're about to take, uh, you're about to in a world of hurt. So here, I'll show you just one more example. Um, one where I don't go into the, there we go. Here we go. So I'm not going to get bars up here. So immediately, you should already be at the portal. I instantly go down, instantly taunt Zamaja, start Ellie draining. Make sure you're blocking while you Ellie drain. I block that mind blast. I Ellie drain at two crystals, three crystals, four, five, six. So, um, okay, that, I did a lot there. Uh, on average, try to aim for like four, and then you can get the other half of the room. And always go left to right. Scan the room. As soon as you go down, taunt the one in front of you, taunt the one on your right. Go left now. Go on the next left, go on your right. You want to uh, cover it in that way because your DPS should be starting on where Zamaja is. They should be going left to right, counterclockwise or clockwise. So if they're in the wrong spot and you Ellie drained one across the room, they were wrong as long as you started right. So uh, it, they're not getting Ellie drained. But yeah, I, I took the Nocturnal healer here, blocked. I, I popped my green, popping some Igneous, getting some Earth Core heals. I won't have that nowadays, but... Uh, you can see that I'm just kind of chilling. I'm still holding on to that potion. And as soon as the room is uh, exploding, just start looking for the start looking for the pad. And when you're up here, if you're low HP, heal yourself. And if you have balance and you have like all like you're low on mag, but you have nice bits of HP, start using balance. Because like if you use balance to recover mag, yeah, you just lost some HP, but then you have all that mag to gain all your HP back. So I think it it evens out. It's okay. I think. So, yeah, just, uh, you know, at least drain some more crystals when you jump back down, and, yeah, you should be okay. Just 
focus on blocking the light attacks and keeping yourself sustained. Mitigate damage, heal yourself. That's the move. That's the that's the game plan. It it doesn't. Uh, there's not too much more to it. Um, you can just um, like, you can hug Zamaja like I'm doing now, or you could be across uh, or like like in the middle of the room. Just uh, remember that Zamaja will have uh, an interrupt that can eat people into the sky. So make sure you're close by enough so when she channels it, you are ready to bash. Uh, which uh, I don't know. If, did I get a bash here? I, I never paid attention. There was a bash that you did, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's, I don't know, if there's any questions about this phase, it's probably your, it's one of your more scarier ones, uh, that's for sure, because uh, you have no healer, you're your own person. Um, and, uh, you know, occasionally, a DPS might have a heal that can target you, and those people, you'll, you'll know, you'll know when you get hit, and you're like, thank you, I love you. Uh, yeah, but they at so, the same time, they are not happy because they were trying to heal themselves. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Oh, yeah, so right there, you saw that uh, right there? That was the interrupt. So if you don't get that, somebody will go into the air, and you want to hope they won't die. Because if they do go in the air and don't die, you're like, sorry, keep keep moving on with your life, though. But if they do die, then just remember, look out for it. Um, once you get that bash, you can roam wherever you want, as long as you keep taunt and keep blocking Zamaja, keep yourself alive, nice and healthy. Right here. Okay, so this is a perfect example because I'm holding Zamaja throughout the whole thing. So uh, this is good. So normally the way it goes is you're going to go into Execute. You're going to go into Execute. So your biggest enemy is crushing here. And just uh, you can just keep it very simple. Um, this is a rule you should do when you're normally not taking Execute. But avoid the crushing as much as you can. You can sit in it if you want. Just know that if you let go a block, you're about to take like a massive hit, if not de a die. So you're going to see I move, I move around in a circle around this watch. Look, I'm basically just moving. Like, uh, like I, it's never really reaching me. I block what I need to block. I keep moving. And now, boom. Okay, so this is baneful. So everybody's HP just got decreased here. I'm at 6k. So the easiest class to heal, in my opinion, in, in Baneful is DK because they have shields. And what a shield will do is your heals at this moment are garbage. Don't use green dragon blood. They'll heal you for like nothing. Uh, you want to use a shield because when you have a shield, any excess damage you take won't go into your HP, which is basically nothing. And all the healing from your like amazing healers, right? They're going to start actually healing you back up. Any damage you just took, it'll get blocked by you. So you block the damage, and they heal you back up to full. So you'll see that I'm about to like boost back up. I base I have a shield on me, and what you want to do is once you're done uh, with the crushing. Uh oh, I think your mic cut off. Sorry, my mom walked in. It walked in. Okay, so so once you're done getting that crushing, you should just uh, literally just rub Zamaja's belly. Like, be up against it, because that's where you 100% will most likely be in healing at this point. So you'll see I'm just, like, up against her belly. I'm healing. I'm healing. I'm making sure that I block all light attacks and mitigate all the damage with Igneous. If you were another class, uh, start, you know, do the exact same thing, but start spamming your heals, because that's all you can really do. Um, in our case here, um, I believe a barrier went out, so it became a lot easier for me to get healed back up, because all that damage I would have taken was, like, mitigated. And I just got healed back up. It did take a little bit longer, but it's just how this fight is with this group. But normally, you most likely will get healed back up very quickly. Um, yeah, just stay by the belly. That's where all the heals are. Mitigate as much damage, heal yourself back up. But yeah, just when you're cutting the crushing, make sure that you, uh, you take as little damage as possible. And uh, usually it'll time out on time by the time Baneful uh, happens. And if you do get Baneful and then crushing, just uh, do the same thing. But... Uh, like, try to, like, instead of, like, a big box like I just did there, do a rectangle. Like, move, like, move the crushing to the right and then quickly swoop over to the left near her belly. And uh, you should be able to heal back up as well. Um, but normally, you won't hold this boss for this long. So what will happen is you're going to get baneful. And you ask your other tank to swap with you. Your other tank, if you're that guy, if you're the other tank, what you need to do is uh, pretend you're the other tank back there. You see Ashmo die on the top left. Uh, so, like, kind of, like, over there in the back of the room. So, you don't need to be that far. Just know the way Baneful works is it hits the closest people around Zamaja. So, you could be, like, 
uh, like on the left, where you see my text, where it says "baneful" on the left side, on ba "baneful Gallonway" right over there on the left side. You can be like right there if you want, or like, or on the opposite side, yada yada yada, blah blah blah. That's far enough. That's all you need to be, because as soon as your tank, or your main tank, your guy holding the manja gets baneful, you say swap, you grab the boss, and if you are the tank that just got baneful, go ahead and just if you don't have crushing on you, the AOE. Just chill in the heals. You don't have to do anything. You just just heal yourself back up. Be ready to receive the boss again. Because once you're full HP, now you're waiting. Now you're waiting over there on the left side or on the right side. You're waiting, and then your tank is going to say swap. You swap. So you can see here, uh, even though this is like a more older video, I'm still doing the same thing. I'm kind of crushing around. I'm not getting hit by it. Here we go. I got Baneful. I'm going to call swap in a second. Here we go. You see, uh, actually, I didn't even call it. Owen just knows. Azric right there, that's Owen. He just immediately, he, he just came in and he taunts the boss off me. I wait for the crushing. It's following me. I know it's about to time out. And then I walk into group. I make sure I'm full HP. I'm full HP. Okay. I can, I just got to make sure I'm the, you know, not the closest person now. I'm just vibing. I, my HP is good. I'm out of Baneful. I got healed back up. Uh, I do have Horfrost. I dropped it left a group. But you see, I'm waiting. This is the spot I was telling you about, right? right or left you can be about this far but i'm ready to receive a taunt from owen here we go he's about to get baneful in a second any second now here we go i'm ready i grab it off him i range taunted because i can boom he got baneful i got the boss off him he can go into group to get heals uh, in a second he, i mean he just got healed back up but i think you get the idea just every time you get baneful call that swap as soon as you see the boss is not on you and you don't have crushing anymore walk into the group get healed back up and uh yeah, then you're, you'll be good. Uh, just, you know, all, all these little, like, things, like, crushing, uh, like, make sure you just walk around. Also, save orb and save the altar synergy. That also helps. Yes, yes, that will help a lot. Yes, that's true. Altar synergy is big. It'll heal you, per se, mm -hmm. just like that, just a flat amount. But, yeah, block those light attacks. The, that's the biggest problem people have. Uh, they just take too much damage extra. They're, they're not going to... They're going to be getting dotted by Zamaja throughout the fight, and they choose to take a mind blast to the face or whatever like yeah, like this is this is a good situation here where you might get into you might get into the uh the corner here kind of and i just start like I, you can roll through or wrap around it but like mm -hmm. you can see i'm trying to avoid taking the crushing crushing will start ramping up the more you do um and i guess one other thing that'll happen to you and you know uh when it happens is when you're in vcr plus three or two or one and you have bar swap plus cone plus heavy uh, that's the worst situation you could be in as a tank, and it's gonna happen. Um, it's gonna happen uh, pretty often sometimes. So, you see how it says Nocturnal's favor and shifting shadows. So I know that since I received Nocturnal first, I'm gonna I'm just gonna block and roll because I know that they're, they're not evenly timed. So I know that as long as I block and roll, I'm good. Okay, and then roll. Okay, boom, easy. Sometimes let's pretend they're like perfectly synced. Uh, let's pretend those two timers are. 2.2 and 2.2 or something like that. Okay, so what you need to do is the moment you see you're getting heavied and you see that uh, shifting shadows, you need to, like, you see this pizza? Immediately hit sprint and move to the left or to the right, whatever. Move out as soon as you can. You can hit sprint because the Maja currently is in the middle of an animation, so it's not like she's going to light attack you or something. So move all the way to the left quick, block, and then boom, you're good. You moved out of the cone, you blocked. If you ever get Voltaic at this moment, in a moment like this, do that same thing, except just know that, uh, you know, it's okay to hold bar swap sometimes. Let people take the L. If if it, if you know you're going to get bar swap as soon as you get over to the left, and you're like, oh no, I have to swap weapons. And then you get, die because you bar swapped, and you were in the, you, you were out of the cone, you just needed to block the heavy, just... Just block it on just block it on your ice staff. It's okay. Like somebody will get hit by the voltaic, but it'll do like one k or two or three, whatever. They won't die. So, like if you are scared that you might bar swap in that during that nocturnal, just just hold your bar for a second, hold block, take the hit, and then swap. And right. you just, just sprint out of the cone, block the heavy. That's your number one goal. If you're gonna voltaic someone, give them that L. Just, <laughs> just <laughs> they'll be fine. They'll be okay. It, they'll be fine. It, you won't. It won't. It won't be the end of the world. You can hold bar swap for three seconds. No one will die. It's okay. And then as soon as you take that heavy, just bar swap. You're okay. You're chilling. And uh, yeah, just yeah, block right. everything you can block, and you'll be chilling. Just keep yourself sustained. Very important. So. So this is the kite hill POV. And as we spoke earlier, right, let's start from the center somewhere. We spoke 
uh, because beginning is very sim similar for everybody, right? So kite healer job is to kite the second crushing that we just talked about and it starts somewhere around here. So she will basically port. She ports every 20-ish seconds, a little bit less, a little bit more. If she's doing kind, she won't port because she's casting the skill, right? And we spoke about it. So the kite will appear shortly and kite healer basically sticks a little bit out of the group because it appears on uh, furthest person from the group and just kites that kite away from the group while maintaining all the buffs. So the better your group stacks, the closer you can be. You, you see here, I'm just humping the group for the most part. And basically, I'm, I like to go on the left or right of Zumaja with that kite because then I can hit the tank. Remember how he said, well, your healers will heal you if you are upstairs. This is what we're trying to do. We're trying to keep our huts in a, in a such a position and keep our radiating in such a way where we're also covering the tank uh, tanks at the front. Uh, if you get uh, frost over here and you drop it in bumfuck nowhere, say frost far so people can pick it up, frost is the gallon we mechanic. It uh, reduces the damage of the DD by 40%. It's a unique main. And so you want to support to pick it up more often. So group healer, mini tank, and kite healer sometimes. If you don't know how to survive with frost as a kite heal, just avoid picking it up because like, you don't want to die. Uh, when mini spawns, uh, tap mini as a kite healer and maintain debuffs on him and pick up the spears and send them down. So downstairs, we saw it earlier, people do certain mechanics and they wait for kite healer to send the shards down. So they dependent on basically upstairs team to send them for downstairs team. There will be three total and you should be, if you're a new team, you're counting how many you send. If you are experienced team, you don't need to do that because they know they, know they get the uh, notifications and basically send them as soon as possible. And that's the reason why usually kite healers as invest a little bit into speed because they need to move fast for those shards. If anybody separates from the stack earlier today, earlier we just saw somebody was dressing and I took a pit stop and gave them a couple of the uh, huts because uh, if person separated from the stack, group healer cannot reach them with their heals because they need to be focusing on the stack. And so anybody who separated like orb slayer or a uh, random person racing or random person doing random stupid things. Like sometimes they just get super disoriented and <laughs> do stupid things. So you will just like be responsible for keeping them alive. If you have frost, roll with it to outrange the um, uh, kite and basically debuff the orbs as well. Orbs is the job of the orb slayer. And you see this is the person and we're giving them a couple huts or a couple heals so they stay alive. So orbs you need to be debuffing because the orb slayer will kill them faster. If they kill them faster, they do more damage to Zamaja. Zamaja dies faster. So very logical to debuff all sorts of side targets so that they die. Same for the minis, same for the uh, monstrosity that appears from the portal, and same for, for the creepers and stuff like that. So that's all on kite healer to debuff those things. So the minis, uh, usually if you're not doing the sweaty stress like we saw in Chaos video earlier, mini will stay in the center just like this, and you can see it right there in the center, why can't they stop? Right here. So there will be Zumaja, there will be Mini, there will be you kiting over here somewhere until you get the a crushing, then it can be anywhere. And Mini will be usually in the center. Relic one is easier to hold in the center because she, she jumps not so much, but the Galanway, he's super jumpy. So Galanway is usually, wherever he jumped, people just zerk him where he landed because he's very hard to move. He's so annoying, jumps around like crazy. And so mini tank job is basically to keep mini in place as best as they can and let people zerk them down very fast. You can see how here Relic one just spawned three, three uh, rotations and he dead. It's because mini tank held him debuffed and in place uh, very well positioned and that's why he died so fast. So faster minis die, less dangerous there are because mini stun, mini kill people, they produce extra mechanics that you don't want to deal with. You see, person over here, by the way, got frost and rolled with it because they're so slow and they're trying to make the new position, but roll is not uh, impacted by the frost and that's why they rolling with the frost. It's a very neat trick. Use uh, your roll dodge CP for that. As a kite healer, it will help you to survive so much if you use that trick. So anyway, so basically faster mini dice, the better. If you are like just progressing and you're early into progression, it's okay to barrier sometimes for the mini because like minis are super dangerous usually and people get distracted they don't stack very well run all over the place so one barrier for for relic one one barrier for gallon way is okay to use when you're learning it's basically you should not be relying on it but it's like not super bad thing 
So that's basically kiting and then execute. Let's go into execute and look at what healers do. So remember what I said, hack her belly because healers will heal you. So here's how execute looks from healer POV. Here is the tank. We're placing our hats, you can see, aiming at her, like, center of her body, at her butt, so that the hat covers this area around both the stacks and the tank. And you can see, like, the edges of the hats. You can see them over here. That's the edges of the hats. And so as soon as he gets the Bane, refresh, make sure the altar is down. You can go and proc the orb closer to them and just do a couple spammable heals on them so they survive. Make sure the stack has both your huts available and all the defensives also up because people in the stack could die unhealed as well. But like you will focus, you will make sure the stack is getting huts and then focus on the tanks as much as you can if they are holding Zumaja by themselves. If they are swapping, you could, uh, you could basic, you could um, just wait for them to come to you and heal them as they came to you. Over here, there's some questionable <laughs> flare separation going on. But we'll talk about it later when we look at the Ds. So that's the Kite Healer. Anybody has any questions? Oh, another thing that is important to execute, you see the Frost being dropped. There will be double of every mechanic, including Frost. So every single support should be focusing on picking up Frosts. So this is the Group Heal POV. Uh, group Heal sticks with the group for the most part, stands in the group. A group Heal responsibility is to pick up Frosts as soon as they appear in your vicinity, stand on every single Flare unless you have Frosts. Maintain Slayer, but that depends on on the um, on the meta, so it could change. So it might be not Slayer sets or something else in future. But like for now, group healers are usually on Slayer and on Spolder. So remember how we said the major ports every twenty seconds or so. So you will, if you are in a row, you just heavy as soon as she finished porting, heavy for next uh, for next Slayer proc, and that way you will always have the better uptimes because as she is porting. And if it's coming up, you're trying to heavy her, she disappears, the heavy doesn't go off, and uptimes get completely ruined. So for the frost in particular, you pick it up, drop it on the side, and then get back to the stack. And when somebody is picking up the frost and is standing on the side preparing to drop it, just stand on top of them, because then you will get it as soon as they shed it, you'll get it immediately after. It will not even have a uh, opportunity to roam. And frost... You see somebody is casting it and I'm just standing on top of them spamming a combat prayer. That way they're getting healed. As soon as frost appears, it disappears. And so what happens is it doesn't manage to ruin people's harpooner stacks because roaming frost ruins harpooner stacks with the projectiles that it spawns. But if it drops immediately on another person, it's not gonna roam, not gonna do any projectiles. Nobody harpooner stacks are, are ruined. Uh, another responsibility that nowadays uh, group healers have is to debuff mini with minor bridge because mini tanks will usually be in ice ice on um, brittle so you would have portal instead of purifying light this is kind of old video where you still have purifying light because i don't remember if brittle was even a thing back then anyway so here you can see we're stacking rally in the middle as well and it's pretty much same stuff just stuck together uh, on his butt if you get crashing, in some cases, uh, kite healer will say, come in with, uh, with crashing in the group, then group healer will need to stay away from the stack to catch that crashing on their behalf. So it's between group healer, mini tank, if they're not doing anything in particular, uh, to kite away crashing if kite healer gets uh, flare during, right before crashing spawns. It's a trial mechanic. Kite healer cannot get crashing and flare at the same time. So person who is getting flare will never get crashing it's a mechanic so they cannot kite it away even if they wanted to so you have to step away from the group to catch it on their behalf if they get it as soon as she ports and right after she, her port if you hear kite hill saying coming in with the crashing like prepare to just step out to get it because or coming in with the flare then they will definitely not get crashing and somebody in the group will get it so an execute is very similar we just saw it we're basically stuck on the other side of her and group healer responsibility is right here so pick up frosts uh heal people make sure your huts cover the entirety of both the stacks and the tank so for ritual for example if you come into her tail and pop it is gonna land nicely and do the same thing pick up frost heal people make sure people are 
covered with the HOTS and HIL tanks that come in in the stack. Group healer in particular usually uh, slots bone surge, so people will come into the uh, into the uh, tanks usually are tasked to coming into the group healer stack for healing. After Bane, you see they're coming back on this side. So in this particular group, the group healer is on the other side than what Vertex was showing to us. They were going on the right stack. Here we're going on the left stack. And as soon as they come in, pop Bone Surge. They got Bone Surge. Bird Surge gives a major vitality. They're healing much faster. So again, you can see over here. Boom. They got Bone Surge. They got vitality. They're going to hit uh, immediately to full health. Another thing that Bone Surge can be used for is pop bone surge in flares because when people get hit by the flare they get, they get big chunk of damage received if you have orbs being popped it's hitting with projectile team they got shit ton of damage plus that projectile on top of it boom they died in the stack and you look at it okay we well, all stuck together the flare was fine and one person died what the hell happened and what happened is they just got unlucky and they got nuked by projectiles from the orbs so if you pop bone surge with every Clear if you can, then that will never happen because they will have a shield from bone surge. So that's the group healer. Any questions about healer jobs? No questions. Anybody is falling asleep? Nobody's falling no. asleep. Or oh, everybody's falling asleep. <laughs> Alright, so now we will look at the portal DD, which I finished watching the video. So this is DD job. DD's job basically Kill the priority tar targets, do as much as we as you possibly can. Don't forget that the Marge reports every 20-ish seconds, so you don't refresh. You only refresh dots twice per tail, like as soon as you get there and once after. And if you see that she is still casting the crushing when your dots are expiring, you can refresh them again because she will not port as she's... So if she just started casting crushing, and your dots are expiring, you can refresh them because she will be doing it for a while and she will not port as she's casting crushing. So basically DD's job is as soon as she ports, if you're first on the next tail applying your dots, you're gonna do more damage. So you should not be uh, lingering behind on all tail, you should be moving to the new tail as soon as possible. Uh, if your dots are placed in a way where they cover the Maja and the Mini, you're doing more, more away damage, that means your parse is higher, and as we just said earlier, this is kind of AOE fight for the DD, the better AOE is considered better damage, so you see Siroria spawns here, everybody top target Siroria, do a couple uh, casts, get to new tail first, and apply your dots in a way where it will cover Siroria. So remember earlier when we were looking at the Chaos video, uh, he, uh, he brought Siroria to the flappy feet, foot, and here she's also brought to the flappy foot over here, and it is no, so if we preposition in such and such way, she will always appear on that foot. So it's super important for tanks to consistently position her on on certain foot where they just expect them to do it. So you can either call, I'm gonna put it her on the left foot or right foot, or you can always go to the closest foot, and everybody knows that, or you can always go on a certain foot, always start from left to right. You can do that as well. And so you see how all the dots are placed in a way that she's being covered by the dots and then she's moving over she would usually standard at the point where it's time to refresh dots anyway you can see they expiring the orb is all, almost expired over here the wall is three seconds to exp expire so they will just recast the dots on the other side and keep parsing and keep uh, inflating the AOE parse in here they're going to the portal that's a solo portal and usually if you like just progressing it you will just be responsible for four crystals this person, Lux, over here is responsible for all eight crystals. So Portal, uh, as we saw before, he goes to Portal just as Vortex said earlier to us, go to Portal looking north. And in here, he has like a compass, very, it's called yet another compass, very easy to, like simple, small, non demanding add-on, you install it, you know where north is, you go in looking north, so much is going to appear right there, and you will start with the crystal behind her, and go clockwise or counterclockwise depending on what your responsibility is obviously don't get sent up by the cone and for each crystal you have to ration your dots and spammables per crystal do not skip light attacks make sure you use at least two dots plus one spammable like three gcds per crystals or let's say one dot one spammable one bow proc in in case of night blade 
or as a decay you have so many dots you can just afford three dots per the crystal and then you kill as many crystals as possible prior to jump and after that you decide either you're running or you're finishing the crystals you can agree with your uh dd's dd that is helping you basically you say i'll execute you run for example if you need plate you have cracked execute so it's better for you to be executing the remaining crystals if you are uh, let's say a necro then it's better for you to run because your heal is better than that of night blade and your execute is kind of not that good as that of night blade so you'd be better off running so you agree with your uh partner who runs who executes in here since they it's just him and the tank tank run one and he run the rest and there they got all three from first four crystals or something like that so kind of got lucky in that regard uh but in some other conditions he would get it from very last crystal so if that happens he will keep damaging the crystals and tank will keep running up until last appears and then dd can run one or go upstairs and tank will finish running but if it's two people then just one execute one runs usually and agree with one another and make sure to call that you picked up the crystal and running it because sometimes you pick up the crystal not looking around you turn around and the shard is gone because somebody else delivered another crystal into it and you're dying because you know because there is no another shard available yet it wasn't sent out so it's super important to communicate in the in the portal and as that person comes back up they turn into regular upstairs dd just to damage to the major to damage to minis make sure to top target creepers when creepers appear if focus called on something do that if a flare appears call your flare say flare on tail left of tail right of tail don't call flare on me that's not a call out if you do that you're not being very smart don't shy away from picking at frosts as well because like frosts throwing everybody's damage anyway so it keeps roaming you're gonna die anyway so might as well pick it up take one for the team um one thing that people struggle with and that any role would struggle with when they learning is if they took two mechanics at the same time they tend to forget about one i had that issue for like at least two months in vcr if i were to have bar swap i pick up frost i'll either forget about bar swap or i'll forget about frost so either i die to frost or bar swap somebody i would over focus on not bar swapping and i would forget about frost usually so if you struggle with two mechanics at once it's totally okay to i got bar swap i'll stay away from the frost for now because there's other five people upstairs anyway, other five DDs, they can take care of the mechanics. If nobody is picking up those frosts besides you, that's the issue. Learn to play issue and people need to learn to play as team players rather than like avoiding doing mechanics. So that's also. And if you have somebody in group who keeps fucking up those mechanics, you can talk to them like, why are you doing that? Are you getting overwhelmed by multiples? Then just like do one mechanic at a time, focus on it, stuff like that. There are also add-ons that prevent you from like bar swapping the group. They can download that and use that in execute everybody is doing mechanics so everybody's doing orbs everybody's doing creepers and dds need to stack as close to her butt as they possibly humanely can because healers uh healer output is reduced when they're baned so you don't want healers to get baned so you want all the six dds get the bane or five dds plus main tank get the baneful rather than supports getting painful so stack in her tail and parse whatever you need to be parsing if you got frost drop it in between the stacks not on the left not on the left or far right because people need to see frost and they need to be picking it up while being in the hut so if you step away out of the hut drop frost and it roams further away from the hut you're trying to go pick it up you die without the heals so it's better to drop it in between the stacks so that you're still in the hills while you're dropping it and people who go get to go to pick it up also uh, in the hills uh, so that's a portal dd let's look at the any questions about portal dd job no questions i don't to prevent bar swap is called lock weapon swap correct anyone you don't know them definitely get that if you struggle busting with add add-ons but here is orb slayer so orb slayer job is to kill orbs as we saw earlier, Kite Healer debuffed the orbs, and as Kite Healer debuffs the orbs, Orb Slayer needs to kill them. 
Usually, if your build is correct and buffs are there and everything, you spend three GCDs per orb sometimes too. And like if the buffs are dropping down, let's say it's transition, you don't have certain like Slayer or something, it could be four or more. And if they are not debuffed, you could be like just parsing it, parsing it, stand by it. So here you can see orbs are popping. I'm waiting a little bit because I know they're not gonna uh, immediately like enrage. So I'll finish my rotation and then I'll turn around and transition and kill each of the orbs. And as you saw there, every single orb was debuffed by a kite healer. So I spent not more than three GCDs per three and it's dead. Two, three. That one got cleaved by the stack as well. So it was already half health when I had to pay attention to it. And the main challenge of orb slayer is one, when you orb slayer, slaying don't separate from the stack you still need to uh, you still need to put some effort into staying in, in flare as you targeting the orbs and performing like uh mechanics like moving to the new tail stuff like that reapplying your dots so that they do damage stuff like that so over see over here you can see orbs it's kind of it's not super close but i'm not gonna go there i'll just be in this flare and i'll be parsing the orb at the same time so I'll turn around my camera and I will see where it is. If it's super far, then I'll step out for a little bit, but I will not go on an expedition to completely opposite side. I'll trench both of my healers, force my kite healer into Narnia because they're trying to keep me alive and they're trying to catch crashing while I'm going on an expedition for that orb. So super important for you to not basically separate from the stack. You can always, like, you can snipe orb up to half of the arena from the tail, and if it's further, you never need to go further than portal away to reach every single orb in the arena. There is like no reason for you to be far away from the stack. Not to mention, as you orb slaying, you could get uh, crash, uh, you could get flare as well, right? You got flare, you in Narnia. You now you have to rush back. You have to either drop your responsibility as orb slayer, to rush back with the flare. Or you're not gonna get there on time, so you have to call Flare Center or something. People need to move and they lose damage. So super important for a Slayer. Stay in stack, stay in heals, snipe orbs from far, far away. You see, they're kind of far. I'm still in this Flare. I'm still one foot in the Flare and I can reach them anyway. So over here, it's like transition. I'm still trying to transition to the new tail while focusing the orbs. I'm not standing there parsing for no reason, outranging the stack because I want to be with the group in the huts and I don't want my healers to be molding over the fact that I'm always on an expedition somewhere. So that's orb slaying. Any questions about the orb slaying? No question. Generally, orb slayer is excused from picking up frost because frost debuff like quite a bit. And so you don't want to be slow and you don't want to be lacking damage because you pick it up, you will have to call uh, help with orbs anyway. So that means somebody is losing damage anyway, so might as well just avoid it. But you, sometimes you can, if you know that orbs are not spawning anytime soon, you, you see it says next orbs in 20 seconds, then could pick up frost in that time because you're going to drop it soon anyway. If you somehow got caught on a weird bar and orbs are popping up, you can always uh, wall spam one or two orbs as you do that because like wall has the the component when it blows up when you recast it, the direct damage component to it. And so you can like kill the warp while do, like spamming you wall at it, or you could just do a couple dots and then wall spam it if you stuck on the wrong bar for whatever reason. But usually the more practice you get, the less you get stuck on the wrong bar because you just expect that you swap back quickly, refresh a couple dots and swap to the front bar and you're ready. No bar swap, no nothing. So that's orb slaying, and again here sticking in the tail. Over here you can see two flares because in execute all the mechanics are doubled. Two bar swaps, two frost, two flares. Uh, somebody called flare stay. If somebody called flare stay before you and you're on the same side, you have to go. So either get into habit calling it fast or get into habit habit of swapping. So that orb slaying. I think we covered all the roles here except mini tank. But we saw what mini tank does for the most part. Just hold minis. Uh, you know where they're dropping from. Okay, we can actually see over here. You see their birds are up there. So they usually appear next to the birds up there on each of those pedestals. And they just jump down just like Gallon would jump down. Once we finished Zamaja. 
over here you saw the animation is gonna appear you see Reliqua and all of them just they appeared in where they supposed to they appear exactly in the same spot when they finished when they are coming into the fight like this that's just the animation how they appear just like that but during the fight so you can expect where they appear and taunt them and basically Galen likes to jump moves a lot so you want to follow the Galen where for the most part Relic when easy to keep in, in place, he jumps very rarely and tr uh, likes to return into the stack very quickly. Relic one has bash mechanics, so you have to bash Relic one sometimes. Uh, Galanware has donut mechanics, so if you're trying to stack Galanware on the tail of Zamarja, usually that happens when Galanware hits about 40% and portal is done. When you try to stack them on Zamarja, make sure to stack him a little bit further back and a little to give room to main tank and to the group because if Galanware makes his donut, donut appears around him. Uh, you don't want that donut to interfere with tank kiting and group parsing. So like keep Galanware a little bit further away. Like as you saw, Sirori is in a flappy foot. Galanware should be just a little bit away from that flappy foot. He's gonna die anyway because you can quickly execute him when Zamaja is pushed. So you'll be fine with Galanware. Right, now let's talk about ulti callouts which is a good one i think this one is rather slow so we can see here ulti callouts are pretty simple yeah this one is rather so slow at the beginning of the fight you can choose either to call it or not because she will either stay and you don't know or she will port so you can say well i believe let's use altis and like gamble she will port fast you will say well that's sad we wasted altis and keep going or you can just not use ultimates at the very start let her port and then start using ultimates right after. In here, I think we gambled because I saw Colo going off here. <laughs> that went kind of early. But she, when she ports, she retains the debuffs. So she retains the stagger, she retains the Vuln. So in that case, if that Colo would hit her at least once, she would retain the Vuln and she would port it with a little bit Vuln remaining. She spends about three seconds like underground porting. So you would lose 3 seconds of that wall, but you would still retain some of it. So, and as she ports, as you can see, 20-ish seconds between the ports. So you just use one horn, one color per port. Next time she ports, call next horn, next color from your holder, and that should be sufficient for ulti calling. When you start minis in the center, you just use minis, call ultimates on cooldown from the supports that are next to mini. So mini tank, group healer, kite healer, and the cross if you have cross DDs. And for the main tanks, if they are downstairs, obviously you're not calling, calling the ultimates anymore. But if it's upstairs tank, you can say, use your horn as you're passing by. So when they, when the major will port next time, which is going to happen anywhere between 20 to like no seconds uh, after your call, as they will be passing by to the next position to grab her, they can just horn quickly and uh, run away from the central stack. So that's how they can use the alts while minis are stacked in the center. And otherwise, it's pretty simple, just on the next tail, next horn, next follow, and keep going that, that way. If you have Turning Tide and Nazare, that's super convenient to put both Turning Tide and Nazare on the main tank, because now they can bash her at the start, and then horn with Nazare right after, and give you like some 20-25 seconds of wall, which will cover the entirety of the tail, and plus 10 seconds of uh, force. So that's super nice to have like Naz on the main tank. But if your main tanks are learning and they do need something selfish, let them run selfish set because they need to go in the portal and they need to stay alive. And it's super hard to stay alive in the portal as a tank. So let them run selfish sets if they need to. All right, any questions about ulti calls? No questions. Okay, any questions about like mini stacking, positioning and stuff like that? Again, so there is a, one of the things that people usually actually recommend to do is like when you have relic one, move to new tail every time the marshal ports. And that's the stupidest freaking advice I've seen in my life. Don't do that. When you have relic one, stack on his butt and keep parsing and don't move. The more you ask your stack to move in here, the worse it gets because it gets super disoriented, lost, then your flares are all over the place. People don't know where to go. Huts are in one place. People are in another place. So the less you move, the better. The less mini moves, the better. You just get to his tail. The way he starts facing at the beginning, 
get to his butt and just stay that way for the rest of the like lifetime of that mini so he dies fast and just don't don't do any of that let's move to new tail every time she ports let's reposition rotate it's just like extra complexity that nobody needs and it doesn't help you it doesn't make it simpler easier or like safer for anybody because you know the sparkles will still appear and they will still hit people and people get still get stunned and the cone will still appear stuff like that so it's just like I don't know, I don't like that advice at all and don't recommend anybody to follow it. And one another thing for main tank, remember how Vortex was showing his kiting away from Zumaja at the distance? Like quite a bit of the distance, you see the tank over here, it's like very very far away. They don't just do it because the kiting crashing, but also because they need a view on the arena and what's going on. Let's say Orb got bopped and um, since their bid is traveling towards them. If they stand in front of the Marja belly, they will not see that sinister bit, they will get stunned and die. But if they're kiting away from her on either side, they have a view on the arena, so they will see either Relicon Sparkle traveling towards them or Sinister Bit traveling towards them. So they be able to avoid it better and easier. So like don't hump the Marja belly as a main tank unless you are in execute trying to heal from the bane. And another thing that uh, helps them like when you kite away like that in like larger rectangle what happens is the cone from the portal is always that ports you downstairs it always is cast on a person so and where the people usually are they are on the major tail parsing so majority of the cones will be pointed at the stack and that's why it's always kind of annoying again we get this cone at us yet again it's because like it's actually is aiming at you so it's gonna be either at kite healer so it's gonna be pointed away from you and you got lucky which is like one out of what how many people are upstairs right or it's gonna be on the stack and so if you're kiting in large rectangle left to right you will be more likely to closer to either edge of that cone because it's gonna be pointing at the group so it's gonna be pointing straight at her and if you're like kiting left or right then you're either close to the left edge of the cone, right edge of the cone, it's easier for you to sprint out of that cone if you need to get out of it rather than roll dodge it because you're expecting nocturnal at the same time. So that's uh, why tanks like to kite it that way. All right, that's pretty much, I think, all the knowledge that I know have, unless I forgot about something, which definitely could be the case. I've run with one group who they have a, a an orb buster portal team is that something that's recommended or efficient in any way probably so, yeah. not because then you have to have two because what if they in portal then somebody upstairs needs yeah, they to have one orb buster on portal one and one orb buster on portal two. Oh, well i guess it, it should work because like there's always one person upstairs and the build is pretty similar because you just need like bunch of upfront damage to kill stuff fast so it's possible i don't see why it would be like it's not a horrible idea and then when they both the upstairs they both just do damage to the orbs the only the part i'm not completely yeah. clear on so i don't know if it's just one focus right the only danger it's there dark. is orbs you want to kill them one by one because every time orbs blows it has this like three projectiles going out and hitting people and then it applies that on the people so if one person gets two projectiles at the same time because one two orbs blow up at the same time they can just get nuked and die Im like immediately that's why when people say oh let's all together kill orbs or let's parse orbs for whatever reason like people in the past used to parse orbs because they would get like terrassian stacks from them and then you see like, people just dying in the stack for no reason and you're like, yeah, well, okay, somebody is parsing Terrasians on the orbs and that's why people are dying. So I want them to die like at the pace rather than all immediately dying because if somebody gets super unlucky and gets nuked by those projectiles, <laughs> then well, it's going to be... plus one and more that there's projectiles? I haven't noticed any on the plus zero we've been running. I'm not sure about plus zero. I know that plus one for sure has them. The dot hits less... There's, oh yeah, there is less of projectiles and less of the dots apply. So I guess plus zero is none. 
plus one should be one projectile, plus plus two two per orb, and plus three three per orb, because in plus three is hundred percent three per orb, and then it's like less of them in plus one. So I would think that logic is basically more projectiles per orb, um, okay, on the higher difficulty. Plus zero with no minis, so there shouldn't be any. Yeah, shouldn't be any. Out of them. Right. 